Hey guys! Welcome to another episode of Learn with Sir Glenn. And for this video, I'm going to teach you how to solve word problems involving arithmetic sequence. So, let's go! So, before we proceed, let's have a review first of the formulas that we're going to use in our discussion. So we have the formula for the arithmetic sequence, which is a sub n is equal to a sub 1 plus n minus 1 times d. So you use this formula if you want to find a specific term on a given arithmetic sequence. Next is the formula for the arithmetic series, which is the sum of the terms of arithmetic sequence. So we can have a sub n is equal to n over 2 times a sub 1 plus a sub n, which is applicable if you are given the first term and the last term of your arithmetic series. And we can also use the s sub n is equal to n over 2 times 2a sub 1 plus n minus 1 times d. Which you can use if you know the number of terms that you're going to add on your arithmetic series. So let's have our first problem. Pedro was advised by his physician to walk each day in the morning starting to 200 meters and increasing the distance by 50 meters per day as his daily exercise for one month. On the first day of November, he walked 200 meters. On the second day, he walked 250 meters and so on. So how far will he walk on the 15th day of the month? So if you want to solve the problem, first you have to analyze the problem. So you have to read, understand, and visualize the problem. Then determine the following. So you have to determine what is asked on the problem, what are the given on the problem, and what concept or formula are we going to use to solve the problem? And after that, all we have to do is to solve for the given problem. Let's use this to answer the given problem here. After analyzing the problem, you can now find what is us. On our given problem, we're asked to find how far will he walk on the 15th day of the month. Then, we can also identify the given on our problem. So, we are given that Pedro walked 200 meters on the first day and on the second day, he walked 250 meters and so on. So if you analyze this given, you can actually form an arithmetic sequence with terms 200, 250, and 300. Then we're asked to find the 15th term. So since we're looking for the 15th term, what concept or formula are we going to use? For this one, we will have the arithmetic sequence and the formula is a sub n is equal to a sub 1 plus n minus 1 times d because this formula is used if you want to find a specific term on a given arithmetic sequence, just like the problem that we have here. So now all we have to do is to solve. So using the formula a sub n is equal to a sub 1 plus n minus 1 times d, we have to identify the variables on the given formula. So first we have the a sub n, which on our problem will become a sub 15, the a sub 1, which is 200, the n is the number of terms, which is 15, then D or the common difference which is 50. So after this, all we have to do is to substitute these values to our variables and our formula. So we will now have a sub 15 is equal to 200 plus 15 minus 1 times D. Replacing a sub 1 with 200 and with 15 and common difference which is 50. Then solving this will give you a sub 15 is equal to 200 plus 14 times 50. Continuing this one, we will have a sub 15 is equal to 200 plus 700. Then adding these two numbers will give you a sub 15 is equal to 900. So therefore, Pedro will walk 900 meters on the 15th day of the month. Okay, so let's have another one. Ameralco poles are being stored in a pile with 19 poles in the first layer, 18 in the second layer, 17 on the third, and so on. If there are 10 layers, how many poles does the pile contain in total? So first, we analyze the problem. We have to read, understand, and visualize the problem. So this is the representation of our problem. So a pile of poles. Then we can now determine what is asked. On our problem, we're asked, if there are 10 layers, how many poles does the pile contain in total? Then... We can now identify what are the given. On our problem, we're given 19 poles in the first layer, 18 in the second, 17 on the third, and so on. Since we're looking for the total number of poles, we can actually write this down as 
19 plus 18 plus 17 up to 10th term. So, what concept or formula are we going to use for this one? Since we are looking for the total number of poles, and we are adding the terms of a given arithmetic sequence, we will have arithmetic series, and the formula that we are going to use is S sub n is equal to n over 2 times quantity 2a sub 1 plus n minus 1 times d. Since we do not know the last term of our arithmetic series, we are only given the number of terms that we are going to add, it is advisable to use this formula. So now we can now solve. So using the formula S sub n is equal to n over 2 times quantity 2a sub 1 plus n minus 1 times d, we're going to identify the variables on our given formula. So first, we have the S sub n, which is on our problem will become S sub 10 because we are going to add 10 terms on our arithmetic series. Then a sub 1, which is 19 on our problem. The n is 10 because we are going to add 10 terms. Then D is the common difference, which is on our problem, negative 1. And now we're going to replace the variables on our formula with the given values that we obtained. So we will have S sub 10 is equal to 10 over 2 times 2 times 19 plus quantity 10 minus 1 times negative 1. So solving for this, we will have S sub 10 is equal to 5. 10 divided by 2 is 5 times 38 plus 10 minus 1 is 9 times negative 1. So, continuing this one, we will have S sub 10 is equal to 5 times 38 plus negative 19. Now, let's have it on the right side. We will have S sub 10 is equal to 5 times 29. Then, multiplying this will give you S sub 10 is equal to 145. So, meaning there are 145 poles on the 10 layers of pile of poles. Okay, so let's have our last problem. So, an architect designs a mini theater with 10 seats in the first row, 13 in the second, 16 in the third, and so on. If the last row of the mini theater is to have 31 seats, how many is the seating capacity of the mini theater? So, first we analyze the problem. We have to read, understand, and visualize the problem. That's why we have here an example of theater. So, after this, we have to identify what is us. So, in our problem, we're asked to find if the last row of the mini theater is to have 31 seats, how many is the seating capacity of the mini theater? Then, we can also determine our given by analyzing the problem. On this problem, we're given 10 seats in the first row, 13 in the second row, 16 in the third, and so on. And we are also given 31 seat on the last row. So using the given, we can actually write it in this form. So 10 plus 13 plus 16 plus and so on plus 31 since we are asked to find the seating capacity of the mini theater. Thus, we are going to add the number of seats per row. So after this, we can now identify what concept or formula we are going to use to solve the problem. For this one, we are going to use arithmetic series. And the formula that we're going to use is S sub n is equal to n over 2 times a sub 1 plus a sub n since we're given the first term and the last term of, of our arithmetic series. So solving for this, we can now have S sub n is equal to n over 2 times a sub 1 plus a sub n. So we have to identify the variables in our formula. Thus, we're going to have S sub n is unknown. Then we're going to have a sub 1 is 10. a sub n is 31. Then n is equal to 8. You can actually find this by counting the terms from 10, 13, 16, up to 31, or solve for the position of the 31 on our given arithmetic sequence. After finding the values, you can now substitute these values on your formula. So we will have S sub 8. We can now replace S sub n with S sub 8 is equal to 8 over 2, replacing n with 8 times a sub 1 will become 10, a sub n will become 31. So, s sub 8 is equal to 8 over 2 times 10 plus 31. Then, solving for this, we will have s sub 8 is equal to 4 times 41, which will give us s sub 8 equals 164. So, therefore, the mini theater has 164 seating capacity. So, that's it. We're done. Thank you for watching and hope you have learned something from this video.